is, as Johnny was saying, a huge honor to have Sugar Ray Leonard on the show here with us today. And I know growing up that boxers were revered and still are revered as some of the biggest Certainly. warriors in the modern world. And I know it's something that Johnny and I are definitely intimidated by. We've started to push ourselves a little bit physically, but the level of toughness, both, both physically and mentally, you need to get in the ring, to face someone else, to face your biggest fears, getting hit by someone else, oftentimes bigger than you, and even more angry than you. The first question that I have is, in that moment when you're locked in, do you see the weakness in someone else and are you able then to take yourself to another level or is it really just fighting against all of your instincts to stay in that moment? It's, that's a very good question and it's all based upon the level of competition. Um, naturally, when I was fighting uh, my, my 15th fight, my 20th fight, uh, and then when you move up to the Marvin Hagler's of the world, the Tommy <laughs> Hearns of the world, Roberto Duran of the world, that's when it's, you have to raise the bar. You have to be as optimistic, but sincere. You have to be sincere with yourself to to achieve greatness. Well, to to go in on that a bit, so there's all these other fights before that where at least you had wanted to be in the best shape of your life and then to go, okay, well, if this is the next fight, how how do I take it up a notch from what I've already felt was peak physical and mental condition? You go beyond the limits. <laughs> you go beyond what is expected of you. Instead of doing 100 sit-ups, you do 200 sit-ups. Not necessarily did I do that? Yeah. I didn't. Well, yes, I did. I've done I was going to say. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure you I'm did. So I've done that. It's been a long time, though. But um, I pushed myself. And, you know, I'm glad you asked that question because that's how I became who I am. Because I always did a little bit more than the other guys. Uh, instead of running three miles, I run five miles. Instead of training when there's three minute rounds and one minute rest, I will do five minute rounds and 30 seconds rest. I would fly in new sparring partners from all over the country, and we would spar nine rounds, 12 rounds, 15 rounds, and, and, and each, every four rounds or five rounds, I'll get a new, a fresh guy. So I gotta, I'm tired, but now I have to deal with this guy who's fresh. And I've learned to do that, and so I was always ready for that, that round or that moment in that ring where, you know, majority of guys, 95% of the guys would just poof, poop out. You know, you, you made mention of bringing in sparring partners. And I was just thinking about this. I mean, obviously, there's an amount of respect that they have to, to come in and to spar with you. But there's also a bit of their own ego. It's like, I want to get a couple shots on this guy. Right. I, gotta, I oh, want to get a couple yes. on sugar. You, how do you yes you're right I was gonna say how did you were you in my training camp <laughs> <laughs> I'd be hearing about it if he was <laughs> no, <laughs> but that's true that is so true in fact check this out uh, it was five days before my fight against Marvin Hagler one of my sparring partners hit me and nearly knocked me out oh. I mean nearly knocked me I mean five days before the fight and I remember vividly Getting into my in the car to go back to the hotel, no one said a word. The, <laughs> no. the, the car, the van was quiet, but it was like deathly quiet. And they all and I knew what they I knew what they were thinking. They were saying, Shh, "Ray got hit by a sparring partner and almost knocked him out." So, so what would Marvin Hagel do to him? Oh yeah, so, there's a lot of questions in there. Oh yeah, so I had to prove him wrong, and that only motivated me to a degree. Whereas that. Uh, I was shot. So your brother, Roger, <laughs> goaded you into boxing. And we were talking about this very briefly earlier. You say you found boxing and boxing found you. Is there a distinct memory in your mind of 
that moment when you felt hooked on this sport that scares the crap out of me and Johnny here? When I broke my brother's nose. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know that. No, I, my brother Roger was a, you know, he could have been a champion. But he, he just, his discipline wasn't as strong as mine. And, he, you know, he would train hard, then he'd go. That night he'd hang out, do his thing. Uh, but me, I, 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 I just wanted to be on time, sharp, everything, and I would train. I would, would, would not eat great food. I, I ate what was available. But um, I was just more dedicated. I was more dedicated than most guys. And you've encountered a lot of champions in your career. Is there something in your mind, you talk about discipline, is that it? Or are there other factors that separate the champions from the amateurs? The, the discipline is a major, a major uh, point. Uh, you have to you have to believe in yourself and and be honest be honest with yourself you have to use what you have in other words when I would fight all the fights that I've had I choreographed the fights in my head I could find out what your strong points were because I would watch films of you tapes of you and, and find out your weakness and your strength and I would concentrate on those things and I would try to find out and I did those things later on you know with my uh, my spies that I sent to training camps <laughs> and to find out what was you know what happened what, what what bothered you the most and with Hagler in particular I found out that he get, would get upset when he faced guys who could box guys who had mobility guys who moved around the ring guys who utilized the ring and that would bother Hagler so I I, I, I did those things so it sounds like champions are also adaptable in that sense, right? Oh, you, yes. Throughout oh, your yes, career, yes. getting ready for these different fighters, you're adapting your fighting style to gain that edge. You Well, you know, the, and, the, and the key is being versatile, having the ability to change up. You, you can't just have a plan, plan A. You need a plan B, plan C, plan D. You got to be able to change up and be multiple. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know that whether it's sports or business or life, that's an important part. Growing personal development is about being adaptable to a changing environment. The world is changing, just like the, the fighters you're facing are changing. That is so true. And, um, you know, I look at life itself as being a fight. We are fighters even outside the ring. We get knocked down, like I said, we get knocked down and you, you need, you need, you got to do your, role, your version of role work. You got to do all those things. And, and like I, I would tell my kids, I said, you know, life is a fight. And you have not been in a fight yet. And they look at me like I'm crazy. But they, they, will, they will get a taste of, that, taste of it eventually. We all, because we oh, all yeah. had fights, right? Everyone's had a fight. Yeah. Everyone's got knocked down at some point in their lives. It depends on if, who gets up. Who right. gets up from those knockdowns? You know, the, I, I, my dad has a saying, and it's something that AJ and I have said for uh, many years now, which is, you know, and, and there's, and I guess, I guess it goes to speak to the sort of coddling that goes on with the younger generation, but sort of that idea where everyone should get a punch square in the face at some point <laughs> and to see how you handle it, and take it, and be able to continue rolling. And, and it, without that, it's like how 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 do you know what you're made of? That is so true. You know as and I'm not, I'm not being facetious. That that is true. You know, to get a taste of getting knocked down or getting hit, not physically, but just be getting hit. And how do you react to that? How how do you, how do you respond to a setback or get up from a knockdown, win a fight? You know, I mean, we all gonna we we all gonna experience that. Oh yeah, day, right. Some sooner than others. Well, we had Alex Banyan on recently and. He told us a story in interviewing you as a kid that in order to gain speed, you chase the school bus. So are there any other unusual training techniques that you used early on in your career to build that physical toughness that gets you in the ring, that allows you to outlast your opponent? You know, that, that question, how can I answer this? Um, you just, it's, it's intuitive. It's, it's natural. It's like 
you got to want it. I mean, how bad do you want it? Uh, it's this thing that you can't, you can't really touch it. You can't, but you can feel it. It's, I'm pointing to my head right now. It's, up, it's what's up here. It's what's here in your heart. And, you know. And what's in your fist. And what's in your fist, yes. <laughs> That's serious, <laughs> right? Yeah. You know it's my fist being balled up. Yeah. Right? But it's, it's all about the fight. Stay in the fight. Don't give up, you know. People will tell you what you can't do because they can't do it. And I always give that advice. And I always dream the dream. You know, we all have dreams. And there are no shortcuts to these dreams. And you work as much as you can, as hard as you can, and you will see results. And your next fight is diabetes. Wonderful foundation you started. How did you choose this as your next opponent? You know, I've been asked that a number of times because my father was diabetic. I mean, my father passed away about a, uh, about a month or so ago, uh, 95 years old. But uh, he had type 2 diabetes. Um, my friends, uh, their kids uh, had diabetes. Uh, one of my best friends um, called me one day. He said, Ray, I, I, I was just diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. And this guy, I mean, was the, I mean, the image of, of success. I mean, trained hard every day, looked like a million bucks, but uh, diabetes today now, because these is called juvenile diabetes, and now it's called type one, type two, because you can get diabetes at any age now. It's, and it's scary, it's, and it's a fight that I decided to take on, a fighter, I should say. And so through awareness and research, one day I wanna see eradicate this, this, this disease, and I want to be a part of that. Yeah, it's a, a very tough disease even when managed. Even when managed, yeah, And exactly. it strikes everyone at every age. It's the complications, and uh, it's, it's just a horrible disease. And I, and this is, like I, I say, this, has been the, this is the toughest fight of my, my career. Well, considering how your career went, I'm sure <laughs> you are a worthy <laughs> opponent for diabetes and raising awareness around it, because I know that it's something that when you see children are suffering with it, when you see healthy adults end up with it and the complications that go along with it, it can be very tough on your loved ones and on your family. It really can be, and uh, that's why I'm such a, a fighter for this cause, and I have incredible friends who come out to support me, uh, B. Riley and company, uh, my partner, uh, we, we, we also teamed up with Children's Hospital Los Angeles uh, to raise that awareness and help uh, raise funds for research. Uh, this is something so special to me because it's about get, being in the position to give back, to make, to acknowledge something that is so deadly. And, uh, you know, it's like my, this is like my child, diabetes. And when it comes to taking on a fight of this magnitude, uh, obviously training for your physical fights, there's a moment of pushing yourself beyond that physical limit. Now you're taking on a much bigger fight, so getting people in your corner to help support you on this is an important mission that you're on. Without question, without question. And then we talk about, and I'm, and thanks for bringing it up, but we talk about this all the time because it, this is something very dear to me, and um, you know it's 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 being responsible. It's showing that what's important to me. Um, you know, I I look back when I first began this this journey, and it is it has been a journey. That uh, when I first talked about that, I got very emotional. Uh, but in the past nine years, we've raised close to $3 million. So, again, I am a fighter outside the ring. Right. Without question. And growing up as a socially anxious kid, I'm sure fame was difficult and tricky to deal with at times. Now you have an opportunity to use that fame for an amazing cause. But 
Talk about that at the start of your career. You start racking up some wins. The spotlight is on you. How do you handle that moment? Oh, wow. I mean, and you, you, you learn by your mistakes. But uh, when I, after the, after the Olympics in 1976, I turned pro at, what, 77. And, and that's where my, my journey began. And uh, all of a sudden now I'm being known globally. And the fame and, the, and the, the fortune that comes with that, if you don't maintain perspective, if you're not grounded, if your feet are not firmly s stuck on the ground, get you in trouble. And what happened with me when I retired uh, the first time, <laughs> I retired a lot of times. <laughs> uh, the first time, I was like 25, and I retired because I had a partial detached retina, and people were very concerned about me coming back uh, to the ring because, you know, they felt that I could do some serious damage. Um, but I was so uh, unprepared, I should say, of the success that I had in, in, in a short period of time, two years, that I went to alcohol and drugs and it, it was a whirlwind and, it, and you know, I had good people, I, have good, I had good people around me that looked out for me in my best interest and I was able to pull myself out of that situation and instead of hurting myself, I want to hurt diabetes. Right. I want to take away diabetes. I want to knock out diabetes. And so that's been uh, a blessing in disguise for me. Right. And to physically prepare for, for this fight, um, and at your age, as, as great as you look, what are you doing uh, physically nowadays to stay in shape and to keep it moving and, and to go on for this fight? It's stress. <laughs> <laughs> and coffee, right? And <laughs> coffee. Yeah, you guys, coffee. No, you know, I, I work out. I, yeah. I, I do work out. Um, uh, my trainer, Trent, uh, has been with me for, for some time now. and But I've always, even, I mean, years ago, I'm 62 years old now, and, I mean, back in my 20s, man, I always worked out a little bit. Even even when I wasn't fighting, I always worked out. I took pride in working out, and um, I feel good. It's because when I get up in the morning to run, whether it's two, three miles, whatever the case may be, and work out, my day starts off, I'm productive already. Yeah. Right? I'm productive. And it, there's no greater feeling for me than to work out and just, you know, get all that stuff out of you, all that toxin out of your system. And I'm not just talking about food or whatever, but just get all those bad thoughts. Because when I work out, man, my brain's clear, my body is clear and clean, and uh, that's, a, that's awesome. Well, it's certainly a thing for to to build habits. Ones, well, good habits that you know. If I know for myself at this point, if I don't work out for a few days, I I know what the issue is. Exactly. I know why I'm feeling off, and it's only a matter of time before we get back at it. AJ and I had just done some work in Chicago, and the first thing we were excited about is get back to routine, get back in the gym, and because it's it lets your body know and your mind know uh, we're back to normal. It's back to right. game time, and it's back to keeping it together. Have you guys ever tried boxing? <laughs> no. So uh, I took a, a workout class that involved boxing. I don't want to say I tried <laughs> boxing because I, I was hitting an inanimate object. I was not actually getting punched, right. which is a much different feeling. But it is physically exhausting. It is. I will tell you, the gloves yeah. are a lot heavier than you think. And throwing punches in a rapid succession, you're using your whole body and talk about cardio. I was absolutely winded. My girlfriend Amy dragged me to a class and it was full of all these beautiful women in LA and I'm getting taped up and all excited to do a little, you know, shake and shimmy. And then we get into it and halfway through I was wheezing, bent over, completely winded. So I couldn't even imagine what it's like then having to deal with the onslaught of yeah. someone else looking to knock you out. Oh yeah, but that's there's boxing is one of the most, if not the most, incredible workouts there is because it's it's the body, it's the mind, it's all those things. And uh, when I work out, I hit the bags every now and then. No one hits me back, thank God. 
but it's the best feeling. It's it's a wonderful it's a wonderful feeling. I, I'm trying to articulate it, but I, I just can't. One day I'm gonna have you guys come to the house, and uh, no, I'm serious. Yeah, and have you guys come. Yeah, and uh, I'm gonna show you some stuff. Okay. Oh man, we would love. I some won't. Hits. I won't hit you. But, <laughs> Can we hit each other? Yeah. Well, maybe, <laughs> we got but, some things man, to get out work. of our chest. <laughs> <laughs> You have to sign a release on it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no problems there. I think, honestly, the the most fascinating thing about all of this is the competitive drive to go back in the ring, retire, go back in the ring, get knocked down, and get back up. And that mental toughness, that fortitude is something that I think we all struggle with. You know, life does knock you down. And... To be honest, retirement sounds pretty nice, right? <laughs> After a, the training that goes on, the matches you prepare for. So what was that factor that motivated you to get back in the ring so many times? Because I, I wanted to win. I want I saw I wanted I wanted that victory. I, I mean I've had victories, but I wanted that victory. And that means Marvin Hagler, that means Tommy. Is is it easy? Absolutely no way. No way. It's <laughs> but it's also a mindset. You know, to be optimistic, but also not take shortcuts. Uh, I truly, I mean, I was trying to re- gain what I had. In other words, the fame and the, and the, the the acknowledgement of it, beating Hagler, beating Tommy Hearns, beating Roberto Duran. There's nothing like it, guys. There's nothing like that. And once I accepted the fact, I surrendered, said, you know what, I'm gonna do something else. And it may not be that same, you know, hoopla, but when I do something outside the ring, it's it's re- it's so, man, it's, it's just so comforting. You know what I mean? Right. It's just so amazing. I was I was curious, you had mentioned the, the chemical dependency that was going on uh, after retiring. Was that going on on some of those comebacks as well, that those things had to go away? And and if so, what was the mental process of realizing how far you had strayed from that co- that conditioning uh, when that had taken its toll? You know, I, I mean, my first return to the ring, my, re- my first return of many <laughs> to the ring, I, um, I'm watching a, a boxing match, and I said, I could beat him, and, you know, and then, and after a couple of drinks, you will convince it. And uh, I knew, I remember when I saw Marvin Hagler fights this guy, Johnny Beast Mugabe. And it was like, Hagler wasn't sharp. I said, so I called my, my partner, my business partner. I said, Mike, I said, Mike, I can beat Hagler. He said, Ray, have you been drinking? <laughs> I said, yes, but that's not the point. Boy. And, um, I said, he said, just wait. He said, get home, get home. We we'll talk about it. But everyone thought I was crazy when I when I challenged Marvin Hagler, because ha- Marvin Hagler was just a beast, man. He was the best. And, but I wanted that. I wanted it, and I trained hard. I trained for over a year, a year. I mean, just wow, right. to get that body back in shape, to get that mind back in shape, because again, it's not all it's not all physical. It's cerebral. You know what I mean? And I, guys, I'm so, I swear to God, I'm so, I, I keep, I always tell people this, I am so different than I, than I was in the ring. I mean, I'm laid back, I'm not confrontational, and, you know, I don't try to punch your nose and everything, <laughs> but uh, it's been a, it's been an incredible uh, career. It's been an incredible moment in my life, and uh, awesome, man. And obviously with boxing, there's a lot of showmanship that goes on outside of the ring, right? Boxing oh, yes. craves personality. Right. And being someone who had social anxiety, do you feel like that alter ego that you had in the ring will also carried over into those pre-fight uh, to-dos with the media there and, and everyone looking for what's your next move? How are you going to get Hagler? Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, uh, it's, it, again, it's, it's, it's hard to t- totally describe that feeling and it's so, and it's so. Oh God, I should say it's, it's so contagious. It's so, it draws you, it draws you back, it draws you back, it draws you back. And and for me, thank God, it wasn't the the, the money, the finances, or whatever, 
but it was just that feeling of being in that ring against that guy and having your hands ra- raised. Uh, phew, crazy, man, crazy. It's like you guys doing that marathon, right? The whole marathon, right? Half. We're, we're, <laughs> we're doing a half. We're doing a half, yeah. <laughs> Maybe you'll convince us to do a whole after, but I, I don't know. <laughs> same thing. Same, it's, it's the same. It's just the same mindset. You know, you just... Well, you know, it's funny that you should mention that because when we were talking to our trainer about taking on this challenge, the, um, <laughs> I, the farthest I had run at that time was 10 miles and I did it very laid back. It was a shit time. It was like 11 minutes, 30 seconds was my average on miles. But I I was just thinking, yeah, but I was I was fine. I could have kept going. I, and uh, and my trainer, he it was like, that's a shit time. So we're going to get that going after it and as we started getting into the these weeks of training it went from the idea of oh i'm just going to do this thing to now it is it is on like i just i just want i'm fired up for this event and i want to give it my all and and i'm and for me i just i just feel so uh, just i just fired up there's i don't there's no word to explain it and so you do a mile in how long right now i'm down to just below 8 30. Yeah, as um, uh, as for the nine that I did uh, last recently. Week. Yeah, wow, that's so I'm I'm fired up. For me, it's I want to come into that under that well within that top ten for my age group. That top that's ten percent. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going. Well, I'm planning it. on retiring after this one. <laughs> so, <laughs> you give me- I don't think there will be a comeback. Is, is that it? I'm looking for the taste of victory at the end, cross the finish line. Gloat a little bit if I beat Johnny and and call it a day. We Which, figured it would be the the best beer we've ever had <laughs> after that marathon. I would assume some of the best partying of your life came after That's those gloves fun. were raised. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That uh, feeling yeah. carried well outside the ring. Okay. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> Been there, done that. So we'll we'll make sure we talk about that off air. <laughs> Along with that mental toughness, obviously. You know, when you're a young pup getting started in boxing, did you have a mentor or two? You've had a lot of people in your corner over the years that you could really point to that help instill that mental toughness, that edge. The mental toughness comes from the individual. Uh, the the knowledge of it it comes from the mentor, James Morton, uh, who suggested I, I turn pro uh, to. To raise, to make money, to pay my father's, you know, hospital bills. Uh, Pepe Carrera, Dave Jacobs. I mean, Angelo Dundee. I mean, I had people. I had such good people. Mike Trainer. I, I, I had such incredible people. Ollie Dunlap. I mean, I, I can go on and on and on. My man Juice. I better stop now because there's a lot of people that I owe so much to because they were a part of my of my corner, right? My team. And um, and my sponsors, I mean, there were people who loaned me money to get started. So I, I'm a blessed man, and I, and I don't take it for granted. I would love to, to hear some more thoughts on that, because we talk about this in class and on this show all the time about how important is the peer group that you have around you through life. And I can imagine in those times of training, I'm just sure that it was very uh, thought out of who's going to be in that room, who's going to be around you, who's going to be talking to you, because uh, you can, we always say you can only you can only rise as high as your five closest friends, and that's not in the monetary terms. That is in quality of life. You you know I again I had the best corner in the world. I just had people who cared about me, respected me, and they had the knowledge that they did because. Uh, Mike Trainer, who was uh, my my dear friend, my my attorney, my my, my partner, and everything, uh, he he said, Ray, if you turn pro, I can have you go with Don King. I can have you go with with a Poland, and these are other these are promoters, boxing yeah. promoters, and we said, or oh, you can do it yourself. He said because, you know, but do you believe that you can become a world champion? Do you believe in yourself? And I said, yes, without even thinking about it. I said, yes. And I was really one of the first or few guys who orchestrated his, his own career. Wow. And, but it was all on me, though. I had, I had right. to 
produce. I had to be productive. There had to be a process. And uh, I miss that. I miss those moments because my success came because I wanted success and I wanted victory. And not just in the ring, but outside the ring too. Nothing, I mean, it's, I almost get teary-eyed when I talk about this, but it's been it's been an amazing uh, journey. And with your children and raising them, what are some of the boxing lessons that you've tried to instill in them? There are no shortcuts in life. There's no shortcuts to success. Um, if you don't believe in yourself, no one else will. You know, dream the dream because, you know, a lot of times people let go of their dreams if you truly believe if you really if there's a if you have a passion for something go for it you know go for it and don't let anyone uh tell you otherwise i think there's a lot of influence and certainly with all the the websites and everything that's going on with the, with technology that everyone seems to be offering a shortcut when i think deep down we all know there really isn't. I mean, it's nothing. But if you if you want it, then you're gonna have to work for it. You have to work for it. But then again, again, there's with technology and everything else. There, there, there seems to be, or there appears to be, shortcuts. But when it's all said and done, you, you want it, you want as much experience as you can possibly get. And my dad would always say, "Well, you can learn it the easy way or the hard way." So <laughs> oh, you know, it's, yeah. it's coming. But the, you're gonna learn the, something. Gonna yeah, learn. the easy way or the long, <laughs> the hard, way. Way. Yeah, hard way. Yeah. And with that, I think that's what's so amazing to hear. Obviously, not a professional athlete, not a champion anyway, but I face self-doubt, and even champions face self-doubt. But it's going beyond that, whether it's the mental governor we have or the physical governor we have. And sometimes it takes a coach or a mentor to push us to that level. Sometimes it takes an opponent, right? Staring down right. Tommy Hearns, some of the toughest boxers in the history of boxing. Well, he can get a little extra out of you, right? That's so true, and... Um you know, again, I, keep, I, I will constantly repeat this. There are no shortcuts. And even if you took a shortcut, it's going to catch up with you eventually because you didn't, you didn't go through that experience. You didn't go through that process. So you don't know what to expect by, because you took that shortcut. And obviously, boxing is a career where there are going to be setbacks. It's very difficult to go undefeated throughout your amateur and pro career. In those moments of defeat where you're picking yourself up the ground, was there something that you were telling yourself the next fight, the next training session that would get you motivated? And it became, I was self-motivated. I, I, I wanted to win. I wanted to be successful. Um, and it's, you know, it's, it's deep down inside me and, I, and the way I think, the way I think, I always be, I'm such an optimist by nature. And I know there's, a, there's always a way to win. There's always a way to win. Uh, nine times out of ten, you know, we, we fail sometimes, but there is a way to win. You just can't give up. Right. And yeah. Finding that way to win is find, where the magic is. Find the way, finding, and finding the way to win, that's, and it is, it is magic. I love it. I'm glad, you, I'm glad you said that. I'm going to use that too. <laughs> Excellent. And our audience would love to help fight diabetes with you and with this cause. Where can they go to learn more about the foundation and get involved? At SugarRayLeonard.com. SugarRayLeonard.com. Yes. Learn about the foundation, and we're going to watch you knock out diabetes. Absolutely. Maybe first round too. <laughs> That's what we're hoping for. Take it. Thank you so much for coming on. We really appreciate it. Thanks, yes, guys. Thank you guys you. are fantastic. Yeah, I know you got a busy schedule. It's great squeezing us in. Thank and you. We're excited for our audience to hear this and push through their moments of defeat and frustration and those self doubts. I know we all have. Don't give up.